Welcome to The Great People Show, your guide to greatness, your GPS to excellence. Here's your host, J.J. White. Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Great People Show. I'm your host, J.J. White. And back in The Great People Studio, Mr. Monsey, welcome back. Good morning. He's back. How are you? Oh, we're not supposed to say good morning. You just said we're supposed to just say I hi. I changed it. I yeah. did change my opening from yeah. morning to high. So I, I am having a good morning. Though. I am too. So thanks, thanks for asking. I think we can still ask each other that question. I'm feeling energized, man. How are you Jacked feeling? Jacked up. It's because of that Monster Energy Ultra Black that you're shotgunning. Possibly. Seconds before the show. Uh, whether you're listening to us on live radio, 97.7 FM in Richmond, Facebook Live at facebook.com slash great people show or on Apple podcast, hit subscribe when you get there. Thank you. Thank you for being here and allowing us to be part of your journey. You can get every show on our website at greatpeopleshow.com. And on that little note, next week, I get a glimpse at our new website. Yeah, that's I get exciting. A at this it. has been a long time coming. Yeah. Yeah, so we're we're trying to drive more people there for uh, free resources. I mean, everything that we do is is we just love to deliver free content for our listeners to help them live a uh, more significant life. I mean, every show that we deliver to you, the listener, is about the insights and inspiration for life of significance and serving others. Because true greatness is serving others. Um, we missed you, brother. Did you get a chance to get away from it all? Is that why you weren't here? Yeah, you know, so I got to go to the, the world's largest fire service conference is uh, wow. in Indianapolis every April, and uh, I got the opportunity to go this year, and uh, it was great. It was a lot of fun, learned a lot. Uh, it was exhausting at the same time, and mm -hmm. I tell you, Indianapolis, pretty cool city. You know, I'd never been there before, yeah, and it's not a city that most people think of as like a really, <laughs> you know, Cool spot. Destination, <laughs> destination place to go, but uh, it's actually I had a great time there. Uh, there. There's a lot going on in Indianapolis. Um, you said you were, or it was exhausting. So you got away from it all for several days, but you were exhausted. But was it a good thing? Is it, is that helpful? I mean, it was helpful in that it was a great training opportunity. You met a lot of people and learned mm -hmm. a lot. It was in no way a vacation because here I was mm -hmm. uh, doing all this fire service related training, and I also had to carve hours out of my day to do my job yeah. uh, as well. You know, so go back to the hotel room or find a table and make phone calls, okay. answer emails, okay. etc. So it, it was great, but it was definitely not a break. Did you feel replenished in any way after that? No. Not no. A, no. Okay. In all fact, right. I felt more honestly. I felt more stressed because I came back and I had all this backlog okay. of work. Yeah. And you know, I'm sure we're going to talk about this later in the show. That's the toughest thing for me about taking a break. It's hard to re-energize when you're thinking about all the things that are piling up back yeah. at home while you're trying to take the break. Is there anything you could have done differently before you left to help uh, reduce that level of piling up i or? probably i probably could have you know worked some 15 hour days in the last few days before i left seriously you know and and tried to front load more stuff but uh, but that's easy but you know we had kids sports and all the all yeah. the other you know stuff that life keeps you busy with yeah so it is so I, i'm just guessing because this is what i do part of your brain says you know i'll just figure out a way to get it done while i'm there you just kind of l l let yourself lax a little bit on i'm sure i'll find some time to get this work done so you carry it with you you just take it with you, right. and then you end up working the 15-hour days anyway because you were doing your other getaway stuff during the day and then working at night. Exactly. Exactly. 15 hours shows up somewhere, right? Yeah. I yeah. mean, it, it, you're going you're gonna to spend the time no matter what. And, uh, you know, the best re-energized time I've ever had was a couple years ago when we took the – our family took the Disney cruise. Oh. And because guess what? No cell phones. No, yeah. On the ship, Wi-Fi is expensive. Oh, internet's you know it's like twenty dollars a minute, you know, <laughs> so you can't you can't have the uh, internet and and you know so you're truly off the grid. Yeah. And I tell you that was that was great. That I don't know, great. and I don't know that they'll ever change that on cruises because I know there's enough people that pay that money that it's like why why would we want to charge less? Oh, it was it was insane. You, I just you know you know there's folks paying for that. Oh, definitely that that level of service just because they literally can't unplug. We had a show last year where 
it was our only, well, at that moment, it was the only live remote show where I was, me and my buddy Mike were in the Tiki Bar. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and and, the and that, show was, that show was about unplugging. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's what we I think that's what we titled that show was How Do You Unplug? Because um I had a similar experience. I was only gone for two days. I did a couple live video or not a live video, did a couple videos on the fact that last week uh, I went to a retreat. You know, mm-hmm. and it's funny that we use that word in society where we label an event in which you go somewhere else to retreat, which is anywhere else in the context of the word is a bad word, right? Right. I've retreated in life. I've retreated in battle, right? That means you, you quit, <laughs> but yet we use that label to help us go somewhere and, and re-energize and, and get better. Uh, so there is a good context to the word. So I was at the homestead, which uh, is uh, a wonderful place to be if mm-hmm. you've never been. I'm sure I, I've been. It's a great place. great place. In the mountains of Western Virginia, not West Virginia. It's right there on the edge in Western Virginia. And I was there for the Virginia Council of CEOs. And I got I got in late Wednesday night and spent all day Thursday and half a day Friday. And I was so inspired because uh, I was still checking email, but I purposely unplugged my brain from as much as I could to plug it into what I was engaged in mm-hmm. there. And I came out with a saying, you need to retreat to re-energize because not all re-energizing is getting away from it all for a long period of time. That's an element of it. Uh, I, 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 you know, we have small kids, yeah. so getting away for a week, like at the beach or something, isn't necessarily the most calming experience in life. No. You're just on the go the whole time. And that happened for me when I started having kids. Yeah, I mean, well, we we did the whole uh, Disney World vacation a few years ago. I mean, those are you know those are fifteen mm-hmm. hour days and exhausting. But that I that definitely helped me to recharge because got your mind off of off of work and yeah. you just focused on the family, which was which was great. Yeah, uh, it was about two weeks ago. I was meeting with a uh, coaching client, and she said to me, "I have no idea how you get it all done." And it was a surprising comment. I didn't believe I. I don't believe I get that much done, and I always feel like I have uh, enough to do, probably too much to do, and then I start feeling guilty when I'm not doing enough to to reach my goals. And she sees me on social media. She knows we do this radio show. She plus she knows that all the other things that I have going on, or many other things that I have going on in my life. I've had trouble getting that comment out of my head ever since then. That about a week ago. Is this a good thing? I'm not sure. Mm. I have no problem with energy when I'm fully engaged in something I absolutely love and am passionate about. I'm curious, can you be passionate about something and not in love with it? And hit us up on your thoughts if you have any on that. Every night I go until I pass out. I rarely fall asleep in a planned manner by going to bed and laying there until I fall asleep. I'm usually pulling myself up from the spot. I stopped moving for too long of a period of time with my kids, on the couch, wherever. I kind of take pride in that. I give my day all it's worth and not going to bed because I'm bored or just choose to be done for the day. I'm actually pretty sad often when my day is done. But in life, I'm never done, and it's where I get a, a deep amount of energy, and it's always been like this. There have been many times, even recently, I wasn't energized by what I was doing and for months at a time, and, and that really is tragic for me, I think. Just this year, I've realized and embraced the power of rest, the power of re-energizing, and the power of only going places and doing things that give me energy. I believe I'll always have things in my life I have to do and don't want to do, but I'm now pretty determined to keep those as stepping stones to the things that give me energy. And on social media this week, our research question was, what do you do to re-energize yourself? And I'm surprised that I never saw the answer, I don't need to. Is this about re-energizing yourself or about having too many things in your life distracting you from your significance that's just zapping all your energy? But I'd much rather be in a regular state of being energized. And uh, we got to take a break, James. I want to hear your opinion on this. So don't go away, folks. You're listening to The Great People Show. So we're talking about needing, I want to go with that word, needing to be Mm re-energized. And uh, do you live in a state of energy so that you don't feel like you need to be re-energized? No, definitely not. I I fake it on a regular basis. Uh, yeah. fake, fake outward energy? Yeah, fake, okay. fake energy. Um, because I think people expect with a lot of what I do for a living, just like mm-hmm. you, for mm-hmm. us to have energy. And sometimes just plain don't have it. 
Um, you know, we've talked in a lot of other shows about your energy bucket yep. <laughs> draining through the day. Two weeks and, ago. and sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, it's uh, it's three or four in the afternoon and, and you're done. But, mm-hmm. uh, but you've mm-hmm. got a meeting or sometimes two left. And so what are you doing in your life uh, that tends to keep you energized? You just don't feel like you need to be re-energized from it. It doesn't zap you at all. It actually gives you life. It gives you energy. Getting enough sleep for me okay. is is key. Um, I, I need my eight hours a night. Yeah. Uh, I need some downtime in the evenings. I mean, that's that's how I energize. And then the weekends, as much as I can, I try to get some energy. So this weekend, I was telling you before the uh, the show, uh, I've got to uh, run down to Hilton Head. Uh, yep. Where not for vacation, but my grandparents are are moving out of their house and have to help clear out their furniture, and uh, it is going to be a full weekend of of just straight up driving and work. <laughs> and and honestly, my biggest fear in the whole thing is that come Monday morning, I will not have re-energized yeah. at all this weekend. And I'm already I shouldn't be looking at it this way. I'm already dreading next week. Are you, and, and you were gone last week doing kind of double double duty on, on the work thing and getting away and then you get back and the kids want your energy and then you got to catch up with work and then you got to do that. It's like, I feel like there's many times in our life where we can get kind of piled up with things. That's, yeah. that's my May, right? I, I, I just looking at my calendar uh, it's just, when am I going to get time to re-energize? And the way I'm trying to look at it now is making sure I'm doing enough to stay energized, mm-hmm. Me- meaning not fun stuff. I, I think it would, cause we saw this on social media. Most people, when asked the question, what do you do to re-energize yourself? It's things like, uh, going to the river, going to the ocean, reading a book. It's like all escape type things. What, what I'm what I'm talking about now is, are you doing things to make sure that you don't need to escape that much from them? I think that's a fair statement to ask any of our, our, our listeners, is if you feel like that you're in a regular state of energy depletion or get into these states and you, and you have to get re-energized, why? <laughs> why are you spending so much time doing things that zap your energy? I'm not... And I'm not talking about exhausting things like running and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working in my house to, to finish some unfinished space. That is exhausting because it's just labor, mm-hmm. right? But it actually energizes me when I get to do it. Like, I look forward to it. It's fantastic. It's fun for me. So why, why, do, why do we have so many things that, that, that we're doing to force us to have to go re-energize ourselves? Well, a lot of us, I feel the same thing if I'm doing something like that. I, I'm energized while doing it, but then when you're done, you get that you get that crash, Yeah, you know, afterwards. And one thing I want to be sure we get back to as well, you know, you, you, had, you had said before the break, can you be passionate about something and not in mm-hmm. love with it? Mm-hmm. I would say no. Okay. But you can fake it. Well, sure. I think most people do. I this this question. And the reason I put this question up front is I was posed with this question, uh, and I have to apologize. I consume so much stuff, whether it be talking to people, reading books, listening to books, listening to podcasts. I can't remember where I hear things. Yeah. It's somewhere along the lines in the last week, someone was discussing that question: Can you be passionate about something but not in love with it? Because the energy comes from things that we're passionate about. I don't know that our energy comes from things that we're in love with. Yeah. I mean, I'm in love with my kids, but certainly they zap the energy out of me. I did this morning. I was telling you guys before the show started, I got a freaking metal splinter in his toe 50 minutes before the bus comes, and he's screaming in my ear while I'm trying to get it out. Never did. Sent the kid to school with the splinter in his toe, right? I love him. I'm passionate. But man, that just took it out of me this morning. Yeah. I mean, it was a wild experience. Well, even things that we're passionate about, I mean, you can, you can have bad, you know, if, if you are somebody who is fortunate enough to have a job, to have a career in something that you are just all in, passionate about with all of, of who you are, mm-hmm. that doesn't mean you're not going to have bad days that are right. going to drain you, that you're ready to be done with. It doesn't mean that it's perfect. Uh, I think that most people 
don't have careers that they are truly passionate about. And that's I agree. Shame. Totally agree. I, and, and that's where my mind has been in discussing this in, in just the last few minutes is so many people live for vacation. So many people yeah. live for the weekend. So many people live for whatever they're not doing right now because you're, you're just not passionate about it. You're not excited about it. In many cases, you don't care enough about it. You care, but you know you don't care enough to make sure that this is something that you should be doing. And I, I've been using the word significance a lot, is that we don't find significance in, in what we're doing on a daily basis. Absolutely. And if you're spending your life constantly thinking about the next thing, constantly thinking about what, what's going on tomorrow, what's going on next weekend, because you need those things to motivate you through the week, mm -hmm. you're probably not passionate in whatever you're doing in the right, moment. Right, right. And it's tough. I, I, I get it. Uh, not everyone can just stop what they're doing and go find what they should be doing and get passionate about it and invest their time into it and feel like they don't have to re-energize. Uh, one of the questions I was asking myself and just thinking about this topic before the show was, what exactly are we re-energizing? Are, are we physically re-energizing our body? Is it because we're tired? Is it because we're drained? We talked about that two weeks ago was why our relationships can drain us. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an element of it. Um, are we re-energizing or need to re-energize our life? We talked about that in the last show. Whenever you have to decide, when do I need to start over? Because I'm just depleted of it. When and how do we need to re-energize our relationships? Because everything's just kind of flat. We're kind of flat. I think maybe a lot of people are looking at the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Um they blame a lot of things on a career that may not be fulfilling or they blame a spouse that may not be fulfilling as to why they lack energy in life or, or need to re-energize. And, and I, I really don't think we're talking as much here about the physical elements of energy as the emotional elements of energy. Um, okay. So are you saying that the people who blame those things are wrong? Could be. It's like trying to treat the symptom instead of the disease. Mm -hmm. If uh, if you're very unhappy in life and you feel like that you uh, need to re-energize a lot, mm -hmm. you may uh, you may think it's your job, but it's something else, or you're looking at your job all wrong. But you're just not looking at any of the good parts of it. I don't know. But I'm just saying, I don't think that a lot of people are really, truly in tune with their life enough to know where this lack of fulfillment is coming from. Because I think a lack of energy is just a total symptom to a lot of other problems. I think it is, too. And sometimes, lack, like you said, it's, it's misunderstanding. Lack of energy can also come from just a, a lack of exercise. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, 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 you are not, if you are not moving... On a, on a daily basis or a near daily basis, it is going to suck those energy levels down. Yep. And you may be blaming it on other things. Yeah. But you'd be amazed what would happen if you get out there and and move. Yeah. Um, it's it. You know, and I in in even right now, I'm thinking more about this topic to the answers that we got when we went to social media. The answer to the question is, what do you do to re-energize yourself? The way that people answered it was based on mentality, not physicality. Mm -hmm. I, some people said exercise, but some people did include a physical answer to that question. But almost all of it was mental. Yeah, it was. I need to escape. Yeah. So then the next big question is, what are you trying to escape from? If it's an escape mechanism, what are you escaping from? This isn't about re-energizing yourself. This is about making a, a, a decision in your life is why are you living this way? Yeah, it depends on your definition of re-energizing. You know, one, one comment I saw in there from, uh, from Mark Smith, who, who you and I both know, mm -hmm. uh, who is a comment. very passionate, uh, very focused uh, individual on, on what he does. You know, Mark said, I've got a, every, every year or so, I mm -hmm. think it was, I disappear mm -hmm. for 10 days. And I don't know for Mark if that's so much to re-energize, but it's just so that he can get away from the, the daily routine so that he can kind of refocus his energy, think about new things, think about his next steps. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's different from somebody who just needs to re-energize because, because they need to just get away and not think about work. And Mark reminds me of 
guys like us where we're just doing a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing a lot of different things, volunteering a lot, uh, work, maybe multiple businesses, maybe shoot some people have multiple families yeah. i mean you've got two yeah. sets of your divorce you've got a new new spouse you've got two sets of kids you've got multiple sets of grandparents sometimes you do need to get away from it all just to just to catch the signal and all the noise because mm -hmm. sometimes we can just completely run on autopilot around that and something um that chris jones said on facebook that i was incredibly enlightened by is the way he re-energizes is he does something that he's been procrastinating because and he didn't get into it in the Facebook comment, but I know that feeling where you've got all these things hovering over you yes. that you're not getting done and you're not doing. Just doing those things just takes this huge burden off. You go, man, I feel great now. That's a great. I got point. energy. Yeah. And uh, I think many many people don't think of it that way. That we we actually put things in our life that keep us busy. And then we realize that we've got these other things that are piling up on us that we're not doing, and it takes a mental and a physical toll on us over time until we do those things. And it can take away from the things that you can be in a in a career or doing something that you are passionate about, that you are energized about, and all those all those <laughs> procrastinations weighing down on you, yeah. they are what is causing you to need to, to feel de-energized. Yeah, absolutely. So we're talking about, we started to talk about how do you re-energize yourself? And the closer I got to this topic, the more I realized this sh this conversation should not be as much about re-energizing as what are you doing that's keeping this energy from showing up in your life? Mm -hmm. Because I think the bigger decision is, how do we manage that? So don't go away, folks. You're listening to The Great People Show. So now during our break, we're talking about breathing. <laughs> And how important it is to re-energize. Yeah, so Tracy was saying that there is an <laughs> app called Breathe that can help us breathe and help us re-energize ourselves even better. My watch has been telling me to breathe for a long time now, <laughs> and I, I mainly ignore it. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll do the little breathing exercises. And I wonder why it's so difficult to stop and take a moment to breathe different, because I feel... A little silly about it. Uh, I I understand there's physiological value to it. Uh, I was telling you guys that if you watch some of these or listen to some of these podcasts on success, eventually someone's going to cover all these ancient forms of uh, of breathing that you can use to uh, just get into a different zone in your life. And it's like yoga, acupuncture, and everything all together but wow. but breathing that's and a whole nother show how you move your lungs and all these other it, <laughs> i i don't want it to be another show because i don't necessarily <laughs> i don't i don't know hardly anything about it so i'm curious if anybody actually uses those those apps on breathing i certainly don't maybe i should so just like we need to breathe to live we have got to sleep to live mm -hmm. and, and sleep you would say is is was God's way of, of allowing us to re-energize <laughs> on a daily basis. So so what about what about the importance of sleep just to properly re-energize in our daily lives? That's an interesting point of view because um, there's a few things that you you can just not avoid: eating, drinking water, and sleeping. Yeah, I mean those three things. Maybe I'm missing something. If you if you purposely try to stop doing them, you'll die. You can't purposely stop breathing. Because eventually you'll just pass out and you'll start breathing again. Yep. Now, you could obviously like suffocate yourself. But what I'm talking like, you can't avoid eating, drinking, and sleeping. Mm -hmm. Your body will eventually say, nope, not going to happen. And um, how many hours of sleep you get? I, I like to get eight. What do you get? What do you I, usually I if if on a night that I'm not at the uh, at the firehouse, mm -hmm. uh, I'm getting I'm getting between six and a half and eight. That's good. That's good. Thirty nine percent of adults are receiving less than the recommended seven hours. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that recommendation comes from. I I've seen it in multiple places. I am very adamant about eight hours. And do you ever uh, wake up early but just lay there? No. Okay. I know you do. I do. Absolutely. No. My my body clock kind of wakes me up between five. I used to. I used to. <laughs> another show. I used to get up. A lot at 5 a.m., sometimes 4.45, and go running and cycling. And I I lost those habits. I desperately want to get them back. 
but my body still tends to wake up pretty early because of, because of years of doing that. And the research that I saw is if you haven't had that eight hours, but you're like, say you go to bed at nine. Well, no, that's not good math. Let's say you go to bed at 10 and you wake up at five. You should actually lay there for an hour mm -hmm. until you get that first eight hour, that, that full eight hours of sleep. Um, so what I tend to do, which is, which is another part of it, we'll, we'll save the device conversation, you know, how, do, cause I'll get on my phone yeah. and I'll start knocking out some work, but I won't get up. I'll lay there every once in a while. I made those back off, but usually I'm wide awake. Um, so I, I found some, some really cool stuff cause this is important about sleep. Um, that the amount of sleepiness we get is in proportion to how much we're awake. I mean, it's your body's defense mechanism to wake you up. So the reason this part of the conversation is important is because if you feel like that you lack energy during the day or you're always having to do things to re-energize yourself, and these are we're talking about like short-term, right, within mm -hmm. a day. We're not talking about, oh, I've been working so hard for six months, I need to go take a vacation. We're talking about I'm kind of waning in the day right now. Yeah. I'm kind of losing it. Um, that this, this, and even Dale Carnegie said, sleep before you get tired. Now that's really difficult in today's society because it's, uh, a little, uh, unheard of to just take a nap at your desk and drool all over your paperwork, even though th physiologically that's what we should be doing. Yeah. And in many cultures they still do, but, uh, here in, <laughs> the, in the United States, it is, uh, it, it, you're lazy if you do that. Yeah. So there's this clock in our body, um, is it, is it pronounced the um, Kirkadian? Yeah, we'll go with that. We might need autocorrect on that one. Kirkadian clock, um, which is based on the light and the dark. So um, when it's light out, you're awake. When it's dark, you're, you're sleeping. And the clock makes a full day cycle, making uh, 2 to 4 a.m. and 1 to 3 p.m. the times when we are most sleepy. Mm -hmm. So most people blame lunch and heavy lunches on, oh, I'm so sleepy. It's like, well, actually, your body clock is telling you to take a nap from 1 to 3 o'clock. And I, I hope some of our audience runs to their boss and say, hey, I was listening to the Great People Show, <laughs> boss, and they said I should go and take a nap. But literally, that's how we're designed. And I, and I think a root, a big root of our problem, and, well, let me finish that thought. I think a big root of our problem is we aren't sleeping right. And the reason... This is important, not just for the the energy perspective of what we're talking about, is you can't be the best for other people. When you are tired, when you are feeling lazy, when you just don't want to do certain things, when you don't want to be around people, you're just kind of lacking whatever you're lacking. And and, and that's the ultimate here. This this isn't as much about you feeling okay, which is important, is you can't give people sometimes 80% of what they need from you because you're wiped out. Yeah, I mean, we, we can sit here all day and we can talk about the need to re-energize in order to be more emotionally intact and better at your job mm -hmm. and better for your family and all these things. But if you're not doing the basics of yep. just getting enough sleep on, on, a, on a regular basis, none of that other stuff matters. True. Yep. I mean, you, you've, got to, you've got to be getting enough sleep, and, and it's something yep. that a lot of people just sort of don't don't think about well uh it's funny i was talking about this retreat at the virginia council of ceos and one of the speakers mentioned exactly what we're talking about and i was sitting next to a guy that religiously uh gets four hours of sleep a night and i knew that and so we were kind of like poking at him and making fun of him and it's like yeah well because it's 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 actually uh i'm going to get off the reservation here on statistics so someone needs to double check me but i remember reading somewhere that life expectancy is actually tied to how much sleep you average mm -hmm. per night that the, those folks that get four to five hours of sleep have a higher risk of multiple things which includes dying earlier than you should because your body is literally just not being able to replenish itself like it should and one one quick little tip on this while i'm here there's a book out there called rest it is, uh, I read it late last year, and it became one of my top 10 books because hmm. it really does cover just about everything you need to do to take care of yourself from a uh, sleep, walk, exercise, like everything in one place that if you read this book, you will know what you should be doing to make sure that you are physiologically in tune. And one thing I learned from that book is everyone should take a 20-minute nap every day. 
not 10, 10 minutes isn't enough, 30 minutes is too much, a 20 minute nap. And if you do consume caffeine, you're supposed to chug some coffee right before you take that nap because it takes approximately 20 minutes for the caffeine to get into your bloodstream. So you'll actually wake up with a jolt of caffeine in your bloodstream for 20 minutes. And the, the reason we don't do that is because we're scared of what other people are going to think. Absolutely. Now, there are uh, offices that are putting pods. I, in fact, I was talking to another CEO on Tuesday, and we were having this conversation. They just built, they took an old uh, accounting room, and these are these are old rooms that are in old offices that are just the size for a safe and some file cabinets. And they, they converted it because they don't need the safe and they don't need file cabinets. So they converted it to a nap room. And it's just enough for a little lazy boy and people can go in there anytime they want and take a little quick power nap. So the, from a cultural perspective, you have to make that okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it's it's why is it so hard for our society to let go of the fact that if you are taking a 20-minute nap compared to a 20-minute bathroom break or a 20-minute smoke break, it's, it's, it's wonderful, but it's, it's, it's frowned upon. Just to sleep during the workday. Yeah, it's just a it's just a cultural thing that is that is it's laziness. I mean, it's just like we feel guilty when we take vacations. We feel guilty if we take naps. We yep. speak bad of others if they do that sort of thing. Uh, but no, you're right. The research on the benefits mm-hmm. of taking a daily nap are are huge. Well, and we, I think it just to that point, we equate it with slacking off. Mm-hmm. That you're not working, but we know, like we all know, like we're at a point in society, we're way past the industrial age, where we're not looking at productivity on how many widgets you put out, that we all have a limit. We we push ourselves beyond the, the capacity we have mentally, attitudinally, and physically to do a good job, but we just keep going anyway. And we just crush ourselves under the weight of, got to do more, got to do more, got to do more. Yeah, I mean, the way that our business society perceives things is... If if you are you have to be present and and that equates to work. Work has nothing to do. Productivity yeah. has nothing to do with being present. It has everything to do with what you're doing with the time that you are at work. And yeah. if we're spending eight, nine, ten, eleven hours a day in our offices or in whatever respective career you may you may have, and you're not doing the things in your life such as resting and re-energizing, yep. you, you're not getting anywhere close. You're not really getting eight or nine or ten hours of work done. You're just there. And that, that that's not that's not helping no advance secret. us at all. It's no secret. So when we come back, we're going to give you some tips and in, in techniques on how to re-energize yourself. Folks, don't go away. You're listening to The Great People Show. So on this whole energy thing, the number one thing that we should be doing is really identifying and think about what energizes us. And I think we, we, we know these things, but who sits down and actually writes out, this, this energizes me, this zaps my energy? Yeah, not me. I, I've never done that. I should. I, yeah. I don't either. But it, to me, it, 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 it's the most logical thing that we could possibly do mm-hmm. about this subject. Because if um, we, we, I believe we've all had mountaintop experiences. We, we all have had these moments in our life where we're like, wow, I feel great. I am on the mountaintop, energized, and then we have to come back off the mountain. Mm-hmm. And we wonder why we can't have more of those. Well, we're not supposed to have those all the time. That's that's rule number one. Uh, second of which is we, I don't think, really know what those are until they've happened. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it could be... Um, attending your favorite team sporting event. It could be these defining moments in your life, like marriage, birth of a child. Sometimes it's just spending time with certain people. I don't know, whatever it is for you. I think a lot for a lot of people, it is getting away. It's going to the river and fishing. It's going to the ocean and whatever. Um, but we need to really understand what those things are for us. New things often have that effect, whether Ooh, yeah. it's a new job, a new mm-hmm. wife, a new kid, a new car. Um, new things tend to give us that that high and then it has a tendency to like you said they have a tendency to come mm-hmm. down off of it mm-hmm. and um it's oftentimes i think at least for me it's hobbies mm-hmm. hobbies get me and I, I have weird hobbies like work work things that involve work are hobbies for me like renovating my basement yep that's a lot of work but it's a hobby mowing the yard 
believe it or not, gives me uh, energy. Unless, it, But even that, I have moments where I don't want to do it. But most time it's like, ah, I get 90 minutes just to, because everything's loud. People, they try to talk to you while you're on the mower, and you're like, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. No, so it's, it's, yep. it's, it's, it's like getting away from it all, really. Um, but whatever, so whatever it is, we have to smart. We have to start small with these things. Uh, getting them into our life is the biggest challenge. You, you, you can't wait till just that once a year to take a vacation before you get away for a week before you start to feel energized about something, or maybe it's Christmas for you, or it's the holidays, or whatever it is. It's like once a year is not often enough, and, and, it, and it doesn't have to be big things. They could be very small things that. Give us that little dose of energy, make daily exercise. I don't know. I mean, there's actually, if you Google how to re-energize your life, I found this one article on Huffington Post where it was, I think, 150 things to re-energize your life. It doesn't take very long to look at that list and go, oh, yeah, I'd like to do that. I'd like to do that. Oh, yeah, that's kind of fun, right? Um, another big piece of this is I, I loved, it. by the way, this is from Psychology Today, go for process, not product. Uh, the point isn't adding something to your list, but replenishing yourself. Mm. <clears throat> uh, and the way that I interpret that is, what are you doing on a regular basis to re-energize yourself rather than, uh, well, eventually I'm going to go and do this one time, and that's going to be my re-energizing for the month. Right. It just doesn't work that way. I know people that go get a massage every every week. I do, too. It's not me. I'd love to. No. <laughs> uh, don't want to budget for it. And then I start to come up with excuses. Where would I find the time to do that? Well, I find the time to do other things that I want to do in my life. So that's usually not a problem. It's like anything else. It's a matter of prioritizing, mm -hmm. right? And and finding things, little things like this. You know, maybe it's knocking off an hour early a day. We can go to the driving range. Yeah. Hit some golf balls. It's different, but we have to take time to invest in ourselves to re-energize because it will make the time that we are working far more productive. And, and, and as you listen to the show right now, there's a 100% chance you're not doing enough for yourself to re-energize yourself to do the best you can for other people. Mm -hmm. I, I can't put it any more in, in, in plain English right now. I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to you, James. I'm talking to anybody that's listening to us right now. There's a 100% chance of rain because you are not taking enough time to do it. There's too much pressure in your life. There's too many things that are being demanded upon you. You are surrounded by people right now that are ready, willing, and able to suck every second from your life. And it's not because they have bad intentions. They want you and they need you, whether it be coworkers, employees, kids, parents, spouses, neighbors, friends. We are surrounded by, by people that are just ready to take every second of our life away mm -hmm. from us because they need something. And we're probably on the other end of that for someone else. I mean, let, let's think, if you're listening to the show right now, as soon as you turn it off, you're going to go do something that's probably going to require you to go to somebody and ask them for something. <laughs> that's right. So that's just the way that life is designed. Um, what is your process to break that away? Um, I, I know some people that just, they have, a, um, they have a certain period of time in the morning where they just block it out for themselves, middle afternoon, evening, whatever it is. And I understand it gets harder when you have kids and all these other things, but it's about process and not product. Yeah. And I think during that time, I think that one of the big things that has been a, a major energy suck on everybody has been these smartphones that we mm -hmm. care everywhere. And, you know, a point that, that we didn't get to earlier that you'd mentioned, uh, you know, when we talked the other day was about devices. Do they re-energize you or do they drain you? And I would argue that they drain you. And when you are taking that time, mm -hmm. if, let's let's use the uh, let's use the driving range. You're on that driving range, golly, turn your phone off because if you're there and between <laughs> and between you hitting the ball, you're picking up your phone and looking at emails and texts and again all those people that want things from you. You are not truly spending that time for yourself to re-energize. Uh, and I would challenge anyone: you're addicted to find that notification that needs something from you. Because that gives us self worth, and then it also takes away some of our energy. Yeah, and it's 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 a self perpetuating bad process where we keep going into our digital devices just to see who needs me now, who needs me now, yeah. who needs me now. And and I'm guilty as anybody. Yeah. I mean, it is one of the biggest problems in my life is my inability <laughs> to stop looking at this thing. 
Do you do it in the middle of the night? I do not. No, but I, I sleep through the night. I know you don't. I, I no, sleep. I, I go to bed and I'm I'm done. <sighs> I would love that. Yeah, I would. And and I have worked really really hard to try to not do that as as, as much. Like literally, I'm when I wake up at two a.m. I am in immediate negotiation with myself. Don't do it. <laughs> don't look, don't touch the screen because I have an iPhone 10. So all you have to, all you have to do is just kind of tap on the screen and you'll see it from a distance. I've even gone so far as to turn off most of the notifications on my phone. I don't even know when I get an email. Mm. I have to go in and look to see if I get an email. And that has definitely reduced the amount of times that I look into my email. I thought it was going to actually cause me to look more because yeah, I wasn't getting I notified. Think. But it it's sheer willpower, brother. Sheer willpower <laughs> has forced me to do this because I identified that my device, like you, was just pulling too much of me into it. Yeah. And I, I don't want to live like that anymore. I've done, I've had to create so much process in my life to keep these distractions from coming down on me and try to keep this productivity high. <clears throat> Not my trying to do more and do more, but do the, do the right things so that I don't have to spend all this time doing everything and not having enough time to re-energize myself and replenish myself. Because a big part of my replenishment is just literally leaving it all away and go spending time with my kids or getting outside or just something. Yeah, I, 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 that's, that's what I have to do. And I just don't get a chance to do that. See, poor language on my part. I just said I don't get a chance to do that. I don't schedule it and take the time to do it. Everybody gets a chance to do it. But I just don't forcibly put it into my life like I'd forcibly put other things in my life. And that's 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 really sad. Um, another big element on this list here is to create healthy habits that will energize you. You mentioned earlier exercise. Mm -hmm. Exercise is a healthy habit. Walking is one of the healthiest habits you can have. Not only are you in motion. But there's a lot of things that we can't do. You shouldn't do. You shouldn't talk on the phone while you're going on these walks. You shouldn't check your email. I was stepping out of a Lowe's um, near Charlottesville on Tuesday, and I and I barely looked at my phone just to see on the GPS because I was walking across the street, and this guy from the parking lot yelled at me simply, "She's not stopping." And I look up, and there was this car about ready to hit me in the parking lot. Mm. I was on my phone. Yep. Now, I wasn't like, you know, texting or sending an email. I was literally kind of just checking, okay, now, how long is it going to take me to get home? It was a really horrible time for me to be looking at my phone. And then if I wasn't paying attention, I would have gotten hit by this woman. Oof. And if that guy, and, I mean, he was kind of laughing about it. I mean, we were kind of joking. He, 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 he was protecting me. But my point is, it's this draw that brings us in. No matter what we're doing, this is this draw that brings us in. It's like an escape that we think is energizing us, but it's not. And it's actually kind of could have killed me. Yeah, and that, that last thing you said, I think, is is key. We think that it is energizing us, but it is not. Yeah. I, I would challenge anybody to think after after you spend uh, after you spend fifteen or twenty minutes on on Facebook or on Instagram <laughs> or reading through your text messages or, uh, minutes or seconds yeah do you really feel more energized after that I know I don't no no uh, it's there, there's no positive net effect for me I can't think of one time that I've ever looked at my phone for any reason and thought wow now I'm ready to tackle the rest of the day yeah if anything it brings me down I exactly. It's sad. Um, this is the final piece of advice we have for you on this, and it is by far the most powerful. You have to work what energizes you into your life daily. Every single day, you have to schedule something that energizes you. And if you don't do this, you really have no one to blame but yourself for lacking this energy. You can't blame your work. You can't blame uh, a high-maintenance relationship. You can't blame anybody else if you aren't taking the efforts or making the efforts to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. it's just who, who is looking out for you so much that they're going to say, hey, come with me. Let's go take a break. You're, you're the only person. You are, you are ultimately responsible for your health. You're ultimately responsible for your physical health, your mental health, everything that has to do with you. You are ultimately responsible for that. Nobody is going to do this for you. So that's my, that's my challenge to you and my advice to you, listeners, is you have to find what energizes you, and then you have to work this into your life every single day. And what I heard you earlier is you're going to work some more sleep into your life every day. <laughs> yeah, trying. Try it for a week, though. 
see how it changes. You know, commit commit to it for a week. Yeah, that's actually good advice because some people think oh, I'll never be able to do that. Well, for seven days seven in a row, days. you probably pull it off. So, James, thanks for being back in the studio here today. I'm assuming you'll be here next week. I'll be here. I'm going to be here. He's for back. The, I'm here for the foreseeable future. I'm and, not going anywhere. And and as always, we want to thank you, the listener, for being here and joining us on the show. Um, the 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 biggest compliment, if you found value in the show, the biggest compliment you could pay us is go to uh, Apple iTunes and and give us a five star rating. Uh, go to our website and share the show because uh, we feel like this is something that everybody should be listening to more of in their life. What that positive energy is, what that significance is. Thank you all. See you next week. See ya. Thanks for joining us. Tune in.